Lesson 3, Properties of Liquids. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to get notified with the latest and new video. Learning competency of this lesson. Describe and or make a representation of the arrangement, relative spacing, and relative motion of the particles in each of the three bases of matter. Learning objectives are State the properties of liquids and explain the effect of intermolecular forces and recognize the significance of these properties of liquids in our daily activities. So what are the things that you need to know? How do you describe properties of liquids that explain the effect of intermolecular forces? And number two, how important is properties of liquids or water to our daily activities? So we all know that the liquid state of matter is an intermediate phase between solid and gas. Like the particles of a solid, Particles in a liquid are subject to intermolecular attraction. However, liquid particles have more space between them compared to the solid, so they are not fixed in position. The attraction between the particles in a liquid keeps the volume of the liquid constant. The movement of the particles causes the liquid to be variable in shape. It depends on the shape when you put the liquid so it takes the shape all the time liquids will flow and fill the lowest portion of a container taking on the shape of the container but not changing in volume or its volume the limited amount of space between particles means that liquids have only very limited compressibility that is why liquid is difficult to compress Let us talk about the effect of intermolecular forces on liquids. Intermolecular forces control how well molecules stick together. This affects many of the measurable physical properties of substances. Let's have melting and boiling points. If molecules stick to together more, they'll be tougher to break apart. So let's have the properties. The stronger intermolecular forces, the higher melting and boiling points. So it's a good point. So if the intermolecular forces is higher or is strong, so you will observe that the melting and the boiling point is also high. So this is the reason why if the liquid is thicker or viscous, the melting point is higher and the boiling point also is higher. If the liquid has a very low intermolecular force, like that of example of uh, London forces, okay, or for the dipole-dipole uh, type of liquid, the melting point and the boiling point is low. So the more electrons a molecule has, the greater intermolecular attractions. Also, a larger size increases the London dispersion forces. The increased attraction of the molecules to each other means that more energy is needed to separate them from each other. Hence, the boiling point increases so same true with the other things okay so if they are huge or large okay so the intermolecular forces also increases so the more you need energy for example you are going to hit something so you need heat energy for that one in order to separate this intermolecular forces and hence the boiling point increases. So let's take a closer look of the summary 
of these boiling and melting points when it comes to the intermolecular forces. Okay, so as you can see, on the left hand portion, these are the inter or the types of the intermolecular forces. So we have the London dispersion, dipole dipole, hydrogen bonding, and ion ion. Or we can include also the ion dipole uh, type. So the strength of intermolecular forces increases, okay, as the type of intermolecular forces, okay is concerned then the physical properties like the melting and boiling point also increases that is why we observe that in hydrogen bonding like water okay the boiling point is higher so the boiling point in lower altitude is 100 degrees celsius for higher altitude the boiling point vary then we have the ion di ion or ion dipole okay so the boiling point also increases so if you put something on water like sugar or salt okay or other things the boiling point will also increase same true with the melting points viscosity Viscosity is a measure of how well substances flow. The stronger intermolecular forces, the higher viscosity. The viscosity of a liquid is its resistance to flow. Liquids that have strong intermolecular forces tend to have high viscosities. Like for example, we have gasoline and we have diesel. Okay? So the other one is more viscous, the other one is less viscous. Gasoline flow easily compared to diesel. This is due to the intermolecular forces present in the two types of liquids. So diesel has a strong or have a strong intermolecular forces, while gasoline have weak intermolecular forces. So that example pertains to this illustration. Diesel has a long chain of carbon compared to gasoline. So you will observe stronger intermolecular forces. So molecules stick together more strongly. You will observe higher density, higher viscosity, and higher boiling point. So molecules stay closer together molecules don't slide fast between other as easily harder to separate boil the molecules surface tension surface tension is a measure of the toughness of the surface of a liquid the stronger intermolecular forces the higher surface tension or the stronger intermolecular interactions the greater the surface tension. Surface tension is the energy required to increase the surface area of a liquid by a given amount. So if you are going to compare condensed milk with water, okay, condensed milk has a higher surface tension compared to water. So you can place heavier objects or objects with high density in condensed milk without sinking while in water when you put something high density it will sink easily so that is a good analogy to imagine surface tension between condensed milk and water Surface molecules experience a net inward force that creates tension at the surface and resists penetration. So that is the very good example of uh, condensed milk. The interior molecule interacts with six neighbors there. It's like a network or a web. Surface molecule interacts with only four neighbors there. 
Vapor pressure. This is a small amount of gas that is found above all liquids. The stronger intermolecular forces is, the lower vapor pressure or the substances with the strong intermolecular forces will have lower vapor pressure because power molecules will have enough kinetic energy to escape at a given temperature. Substances with high vapor pressure are said to be volatile. That is, they easily evaporate. So when there is a lid on the container, the gas space molecules are trapped. They are a vapor. So the vapor creates a pressure. That's why we call them vapor pressure. Lid blocks exiting vapor. Molecules in a vapor space collide with walls and cause a pressure. So that is called vapor pressure. So the evaporated rate is equal to the condensed rate. That is an equilibrium. So change in temperature, change in evaporation rate, and change in vapor pressure. So when you boil something, when you cover the lid or the yes, you put the lid, okay, it will also create pressure. So that is called vapor pressure from the steam of the water. Okay. Molar heat of vaporization. So the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization. So what is the difference between the two? When we say the heat of fusion, this is the heat required to melt a solid. While heat of vapor, uh, vaporization is the heat required to vaporize a liquid. So these are determined by the strength of the intermolecular forces. Substances with high intermolecular forces will have higher melting and boiling points. So energy requirements for changing the state. In ice, the water molecules are held together by strong intermolecular forces. The energy required to melt 1 gram of a substance is called the latent heat of fusion. So take note, from solid to liquid, for ice, it requires 80 calories per gram. The energy required to change 1 gram of liquid to its vapor is called latent heat of vaporization. So this is liquid water turned into steam or vapor. For water, it is 540 calories per gram. As you can see, the amount of energy or heat required is greater compared to melting so it requires a lot of energy for you to vaporize something than to melt something hope you understand the lesson for today let's see if you understand if you really understand the lesson for today let us test your understanding about properties of liquids write t if the statement is true and f if it is false Time starts now. Right, here's the answer. Very good if you got five correct answers. See you in the next lesson.